What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're wondering why my shirt looks so crazy right now, it's because my shirt is actually green and it's the same color as my green screen. So it looks like really crazy. I hope it's not distracting, but nonetheless, I think it's kind of cool. So I'm just gonna go with it. And we're learning about strings today. Strings, relatively simple topic, but uh, like in my previous courses, I'm going to kind of deep dive, go a little bit deeper into them, and we're going to make this fun, interesting, and very real world. So first things first, we just got done with the stack versus heat video, compiler video, or it's like one video back. Is a string a value type or is a string a reference type? Leave it down in the comments if you know what it is. Show everybody how what a genius you are. It's a reference type. And you would think that a string would be a value type, but a string is indeed a reference type because let's just go ahead and let's type out our very first string. We'll call this one test string. We'll just name this test. You can name it whatever you want to. Just make sure that you know, you're kind of coding along here. And I'll show you what a string is actually this. Like if we want to get really low level and we want to think about, you know, test low level string, we're like Uber hacker here, is a st string is actually a char of arrays. So we have this, this is actually what it looks like underneath everything. And the CLR, like I mentioned in my uh, installing Visual Studio video, is actually going to convert it to this at compilation. So you hit the green button, it's gonna convert it to test, and that's actually what's happening. So string, think double quotes. If you really remember anything that I just told you there, string is a double quote, a char is a single quote, and a string is made of chars and is converted, it's comp uh, converted through the CLR at runtime. Um, very important to realize that it's a reference type and that it's not a value type. A string is a reference type. It's kind of something you, you probably want to know whether that's going to, you know, you're going to be thinking, you know, about these things daily about strings in that level. Probably not, but it's something good to know. So there's also a uppercase string and this one th really throws people off. So we'll call this one test string um, static because it is a static class test. So is there a difference? It's kind of a trick question. Is there a difference between the upper this and this? No. In Microsoft's eyes, they are equivalent and you should treat them as equivalent, but recognize this is that a string is going to have all types of cool little extension methods here. So if you type in string, you're gonna get way more methods than you're gonna get with string. Let me see, like I think that if I just typed in test string like this, test string, and I typed in these methods like that, yeah, you do get some, but according to Microsoft, this is going to have more actual methods than the string. But they're, once again, they're equivalent, and if you use them, you really would not have to worry about using them in any other way. Or you wouldn't have to worry about certain use cases, so just realize that they're equivalent, but this one's going to have more um, extension methods with it. So. There's very, there's many ways that you can initialize strings. So we can initial uh, declare it without initializing it, and it's going to set it to a null value. So you can initialize this to null. Important, important. I'm going to put like important like four times. Important, important, important. If there's any, like even the rest of like this course, if you realize anything, test int, can you initialize a value type to null? 
You can initialize a string to null, but can you initialize a int to null? No, you can't. Value types cannot be null. That is very important. Always remember that. If you remember the strings and take the rest of the course, but if there's anything that I want you to learn, make sure to remember that value types cannot be null. If you have to write that down like 50 times, remember that, but I, I'm going to have to remove this because I'm not going to be able to actually compile anything. So let's go ahead and let's talk about verbatim or literal versus verbatim. Another important topic. A literal string, you will see these a lot in file paths. So we've got a file path here. If you are a desktop programmer, you probably already have seen like a lot of this. If you're a web developer like I am, you don't see it as much, but you do see it. And let's go ahead and make a pretend file path. Then let's make a string file path verbatim. And then we will make a verbatim file path. There's very few differences, but so look at these two. This is the literal. This is the verbatim. A literal string is going to use escape sequences. And I'll leave a link to ex string escape sequences. If you have time, I would highly recommend just going through and just taking a look at all these escape sequences and trying to form a relationship. You don't need to memorize any of these, but try to form a relationship about what's going on with all these escape sequences because you're going to see escape sequences a lot. A literal string will include the escape sequences. A verbatim, a verbatim path is going to you don't have to worry about escape sequences. So you can just paste in like a file path string and it will do all the escape sequences for you and you don't have to worry about it. I've seen online where people say that verbatim strings are a code smell, but a lot of times people are going to, you know, people are just going to get in heated arguments about this. And I've used verbatim strings in a production environment and nobody's ever said anything to me about it. And nobody has ever, you know, made a big deal about uh, verbatim string. So I wouldn't get too wrapped up about it and uh, just realize that those are the, that's the differences. You can even, with a verbatim string, you can actually even do stuff like this. So you could just like, and it will compile and it's going to even do all of these um, uh, enters right here. So another cool little tidbit. And once again, you will see that later in like the real world. I think I was saying that a lot. <laughs> so strings in C sharp are immutable. So we'll talk about string immutability. So strings are immutable and immutable is a fancy word for read only. A string is read only um, if you declare it, so let's just say string s1 is equal to hello. We have this. So we're going to go ahead and we're, we're going to declare string. We'll have string s2 is equal to s1. Then we will have s1 is equal to world. We're going to make a little hello world program. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to do our console write line. So you would think intuitively here that it would create hello world, but watch what happens. So it goes through, creates this one. It's going to say, you know, S2, S1. And you would think because it's a reference type that it will just jam them together. Everything will be hunky dory. We'll all get to live our lives. But really what happens is, is it throws out the world so the actual you know what you're trying to jam together it threw the other one out and put the other one at a new piece of memory so by the time you know it tries to jam them together there's no th there's nothing there and it just displays it 
that is the concept of string immu immutability. It's very, uh, that may have confused you, but just realize this. You create a string, and if you change it, it throws the other one out, and then that other piece of memory just kind of sits there until, I guess you could, in theory, if you were like some kind of genius programmer that could find places in memory to like hook them back together, I guess you could, but once that piece of memory, once it's changed, you're never going to see that old piece of memory again. Your computer is going to move on and the garbage collector, this is another, we're getting like really deep. The garbage collector is going to come by and pick up your old variable and he's going to be like the programmer data. He's going to be like the data janitor. He's going to pick up your data and say, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up, I'm cleaning up the trash here, clean up these old variables and it's going to pick up that variable for you because you're not going to be using it anymore because it's pretty much um, quote unquote like dead. So why do why do they make it? Why does Microsoft make a big deal? Because of uh, threading or race conditions. So this is actually once again we're talking about race conditions in a beginner programming course. So if two parts of the program were to simultaneously try to execute and try to get a variable at the same time what would happen is something called a race condition this is an interview question so you know take note I'm not a uh, some people are really good at asynchronous code whenever you're working with very high performance code you're using a lot of these but just remember that immutability is what prevents um, threading issues and allows your computer your uh, program to be more thread safe so just a little tidbit there. And if they're trying to access at the same time, that's called a race condition. And that's going to, you know, be the source of issues with a lot of asynchronous code. So um, the f this, is, this is the last part. Another, um, you know, pretty important thing, string interpolation. This is every single language is go going to have this and composite formatting. So let's just say, string first name we're gonna just do some very simple examples here first name is equal to teddy string last name is equal to smith then we go in here do a console write line and string interpolation basically just means you put this in front of that and then you can put in your variables and they have to be either numbers or strings or something that can be inserted into a string. So be cognizant of that or you might get like a weird value. First name, then we'll have last name. So go ahead and run that, see what that looks like. My name is Teddy Smith. We just basically inputted our variables like that. And then with composite formatting, very simple, Ex show you ex exactly what it looks like. Once again, this is not rocket scientist at all. Same, same string, say zero, one, but at the end, instead of, you know, input, putting it into the actual string, we will do this first name, last name. Go ahead and run this, see what it looks like. And we have just completed our course. You also just um, for, there's also a thing, let me just go ahead and let's talk about string builder too. So you're probably not going to need to use string builder when you are first starting out. A string builder is if you are performing thousands of calc you're performing thousands of calculations on you're doing or you're doing thousands of iterations. So if you had a for loop example for loop with a thousand iterations. Um, you may need a string builder and a string builder basically what you do is you type in var sb you're going to do string builder 
and the string builder is going to give you all types and i'm actually not like a real i don't know that much about string builder because i've used it in other let me see i gotta declare new here i've used it in other languages but i have not used it i've actually think i think i've used string builder in javascript but i've not used it a bunch or a ton in other uh but basically you create that object and it is this kind of advanced but you would be, you would append things so you'd have i don't know um we'll just put in our first name right here then you would append that and let's go and you create you would create your strings in that fashion and if you need just insane performance or if you're performing like i said you're performing a string calculation um it's highly optimized and it's it's built for performance and you would only need to use that if you, like I said, if you are in a situation where you're doing like thousands of iterations and you would just build your um, string that way. So it'd be like test string. Oh, test string builder. Yeah, and then you would just kind of go through there and you would add them on your own and it would be very high performance and you would you know you you would save yourself you would save yourself a bunch of time as well too if you had like something that was taking thousands and thousands of calculations but anyway that's going to be my video for today i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching